Microsoft has done it again. Well, actually, they're actually doing good stuff this time, but they've released more things. And it was actually, uh, oh, I think several months back, I did a little story about Microsoft releasing a bunch of patents and joining the open source community. But most of the patents were like 20 something years old and everyone's like, who cares? No one's going to use this stuff. But it's cool that they actually open source something for once instead of making closed and proprietary stuff. Well, they finally released something that people use, but we were already kind of using it on Linux. And I'm talking about the XFAT file system. It's kind of interesting that XFAT, uh, which is used a lot with like SD cards and some things like uh, USB drives on occasion for like bootable drives and, and a lot of digital cameras use the XFAT format because you can go above fig four gigabytes when it's formatted in XFAT. Whereas if it was in like FAT32, you'd be stuck at that 4, 4G limit, which it, roughly in video terms, that's about 25, 30 minutes worth of recording uh, at 1080p. And if you're doing 4K, obviously that's not going to work. Um, but needless to say, uh, it is used, Is have, as far as is it used in your desktop, is it used in computing? Not really. I mean, it's very rare I'd ever see a computer actually formatted in XFAT. In fact, I never have. Uh, I've only seen like maybe the occasional SD card. And what has happened is I think sometime in 2010, Samsung already created some drivers called Fuse or Fuse uh, FAT drivers for Linux. So we've been able to use XFAT for a while. The cool thing about them releasing it under a GPL license and saying, here, Linux, you can have it, is since it's under a GPL license, the Linux kernel team can bake it into to Linux. So it means if you have something formatted in that, you don't have to go out and install another package. It just works out of the box, which is pretty cool. So uh, not really that big a deal, though. Like Mac and Windows had this native, and Linux, if you actually use this format, from your camera or whatever it might be, you would just go ahead and install this package and it would be fine as of like 2010. So it's been nine, 10 years. However, it being native out of the box, that's a good thing. But it kind of brings us back to this, uh, do we even want Microsoft in the Linux community kind of uh, mantra? And, and the reason why you'd actually have this question, most people would be like, hey, Someone contributing, actually helping, that's awesome. Bring them on. We always love that. However, Microsoft just has this huge, huge uh, cloud over their head just because of all the negative impact they've had on the computing industry. It's mainly because Microsoft has always done a lot of proprietary things they've locked uh, a lot of technologies in to where no one else could use anything but Microsoft software and hence hampering a lot of development. They've also been huge proponents of some really, really negative business practices such as extend, embrace, extinguish, which basically says they extend, uh, let's say, Linux needs something else and they extend its value. They embrace Linux, they bring them in, cozy up to them, and then they extinguish them once they have enough clout over them. That has been their business mantra for 20, 30 years or so. I mean, it, pretty much since they were founded in the late 70s, early 80s. And it has a very, very, very negative history over this because of the extreme uh, bad business practices of the company. So, with that, many people don't like Microsoft's help. So that's a very interesting point. And the cool thing about Linux, I, I'm not in this camp. I think Microsoft releasing the occasional thing that helps out a little bit is great. Because when it comes to Linux, everything's completely open. There's no company to really embrace and extinguish here. Uh, that's why all they can do is extend when it comes to Linux, they can give us extra tools, things here and there that actually help us out as a community, but there's nobody to really to snuggle up to to really kill Linux as a whole. Everything's open source. Everything's all over the world. 
everyone uses it. When you go to data centers, it's not Microsoft servers sitting there. Those are Linux servers. Linux already runs the world. It runs so much as far as the networking aspect, the server aspect. Microsoft's already lost this game. And that's why I'm like, it really doesn't matter. So I love this article. I love the fact that we can now have native XFAT with probably, what, one or two subversions down the road on, on the Linux kernel. So probably around like 5.5 or something, we'll start to see XFAT being built into the Linux kernel. This is amazing. I absolutely love this to see uh, Microsoft uh, give back to the community, so to speak. Now, is there any nefarious purpose here? Probably. It's Microsoft. I mean, come on. They're like the ultimate evil empire in the computing world. And I'll probably end up needing to do a whole story about this. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to hear about the origins of Microsoft, how like they stole MS-DOS, or not so much steal, but how it got finangled and they actually got their start. It's kind of a, a really interesting shady story where most people think Bill Gates is some kind of genius when it comes to the technology world. And really, uh, the true story behind that, as, as I see it and how I've been told, uh, told about, and, and I have certain... Uh, sources and other things I've read and kind of pieced together here that kind of no, the really only innovation he's had was really around the uh, basic language. And that was the extent of it. When it came to the operating system, that was a lot of borrowed code and a lot of other shenanigans and how he actually got the deal with IBM and the exclusivity. A lot of the starts of Microsoft is really, really interesting to see how Bill Gates, I don't think, was a great uh, genius in the tech world. I think he was a great genius in the tech world when it came to business, how he was able to isolate, how he was able to basically kill every piece of competition he had. It's really interesting to see how ruthless this company was and how far they set back the tech world by really the, making it so close source in nature. So uh, let me know in that context. It can get kind of dark. I mean, I'm not going to lie here. It's kind of a dark story. So, And I'm more of the bright and fluffy kind of guy when it comes to the stories. But uh, Microsoft's one of those ones. There's just no happy ending there. I, I guess maybe the happy ending is, is Bill Gates really came out and had made billions and, and used some of that money to really help out a lot of other people through his foundation. I think that part of the story is really the happy ending. But as far as the company Microsoft, ooh, there's so much stuff there that I think so many average people just don't realize in how much they didn't contribute to the evolution of the personal computer and how they pretty much stifled a lot of innovations and competition and, and really set back the computer world many, many years in my eyes. But that's the difference between open source and closed source, and really you're starting to see the evolution of that when it comes from closed source back in the 90s and early 2000s to more of the open source nature of today. It's really amazing. So yes, I love that Microsoft's contributing to the Linux kernel. I love the fact they're contributing uh, certain patents and things. And I know I'm not worried about them because I know there's so many brilliant minds in the Linux space that would be able to see right through any nefarious purposes or uh, I think some people are worried they're building back doors and stuff like that and then doing commits to the Linux kernel and it just doesn't work like that. There, there's so many checks and balances that won't happen. But anyways, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And I'll probably do a story on Microsoft, but just let me know how you guys want to actually hear this. How how'd you want it played? I'd probably have to break it up into parts because it's such an involved story. And really, the thing that's most interesting is the origin story of Microsoft and how I think so many people get it wrong. But with all that said, let me know in the comments. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.